Hello and welcome to Learn to Drive the Easy Way. I'm approved driving instructor Michael Gambin and I'm going to show you how to drive manual, automatic and cars fitted with disability controls in the easiest way possible. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And remember to hit the subscribe button underneath to see all of our videos. So we're going to talk about crossroads now. The three types are uncontrolled, controlled, and unmarked. And we're going to talk about those in a bit, but what we're going to talk about first of all is yellow box junctions and the position required for a right turn. So yellow box junctions, like in this picture here, you are not allowed to stop in a yellow box unless you are turning right and your exit is clear which basically means if you can see that the road that you're turning right into has traffic obstructing it, you are not allowed to enter that yellow box. You have to wait behind it. If the traffic then starts to move and there is a space then available, make sure the traffic light is still green, but then you can go into the middle of the junction and wait for the oncoming vehicles before you then commit. If there isn't any obstruction in the road you're turning right into, you can go straight into the middle of the junction and wait for those oncoming vehicles. Now, what could happen is that you go into the middle of the junction and there is no obstruction in the exit. OK, so you've done nothing wrong, but then oncoming vehicles start turning left and then they block that part of the road up. You cannot get penalised because legally you have entered that yellow box when the exit was clear. So all you would then do when it's safe to commit to going, so there's no more oncoming vehicles, you just basically go as far over as you possibly can. So you allow the junction to be a bit more open. So here we can see the red traffic light up ahead, but we can see the yellow box. So we're just gonna wait here until we see there's the space available before we then commit. Now we can see that the traffic light remained as a green straight arrow, but if it did change, we would just stop behind the yellow box. It's not a problem. Yes, you are past the stop line, but you're not going to be impeding on anyone. So again, here we can see that we've got the yellow box and it's not clear for me at the moment. So I'm just going to stay back behind the line and wait for the gap to fall. We can see the traffic lights now change. So we're going to wait for those two vans to move. And once they do, we can then start to proceed. Be cautious to that, pedestrian, uh, that cyclist, just in case they decide to put in front. We can then see another yellow box junction. We can see the van seems to have broken down here. So again, we're just gonna hold it back. We're gonna allow them to develop. And then once it's safe, we will then make our move. Unfortunately though, they were seeming to be pretty broken down. Now the space is available. The traffic light is still green, so we can then proceed. The second thing we're going to talk about is the position. Now there's two ways of doing this. We have what we call near side to near side or passengers to passengers, and we have drivers to drivers or offside to offside. The reason why this is the near side of the car to the passenger side is the near side is because it's the nearest side to the curb when you park. Now, the way that we can tell which technique we need is the position of the roads or the road markings. So if there are arrows on the floor and you can see that your arrow for the right turn is before the oncoming vehicle's right arrow for their right turn, then you would do it as near side to near side or passengers to passengers, like in this picture. If the road markings show that your right turn arrow is after the road that they're turning right into, again, like in this picture, then you would do it as drivers to drivers or offside to offside. If there aren't any road markings though, you need to acknowledge what type of technique you would need to use. Now, the problem is some people won't do the correct technique, okay? It's almost like a local knowledge thing, which is not how it should be done. The way that we can normally depict which technique we need to use is if the road is a perfect cross. So like in this picture, it should be drivers to drivers or if the road that you're turning into is after the road that they're turning right into. So you go past the road on the left before you get to the road on the right, then again, that would be drivers to drivers. But if the road that you're turning right into is before the road that's on the left, 
or the roads are angled in the way which would make it too difficult to really make that turn, then you would do it as passengers to passengers or near side to near side. So I'll put a couple videos up now so you can see the difference in the two techniques. And then we'll talk about the four types of controlled crossroads as well as the two uncontrolled, so the uncontrolled and the unmarked. So we have a controlled crossroads. We can see that there's a sign that says no left turn, so we can go straight and right only. I want to turn right, so mirrors and signal. I'm slowing down nice and early. Again, there's no point accelerating up to a red traffic light. We want to try to get there when it's gone to green, so then we don't have to stop. It makes it more economical. If you're driving a manual car, it also means you don't need to find that dreaded bite point. Now, we're turning right, and we can see the oncoming black car with a right indicator on. Now, because this road is angled, I will turn passengers to passengers. So I'll slow down, stop just before the midpoint to allow that black car to go past on my passenger side. So I'm just gonna edge the car forward. I'm just gonna put a little bit of right turn on from here, and then I can start my turn. Now you can see on that occasion that the oncoming vehicle went a bit too far forward. They should have held back a little bit more than that there. But all I did to adjust was use a bit more brake so I get that extra clearance and then that won't be an issue. We won't block each other. Now look at the position of the roads to one another. The road that's to your right is further away than the road on the left so because of that we would want to use a drivers to drivers or offside to offside technique to be able to make this safe for both you and the oncoming vehicle remember as well the advantage of doing it as drivers to drivers or offside to offside is that your visibility is improved you don't have a vehicle in front of you obscuring your vision now we're looking at the vehicle that's opposite, we can see that they don't have their indicator on, so we assume that they're going straight, but remember, assumptions and guarantees are two different things. So just take your time. We know that we're turning right, we have to give way to oncoming cars, so there's no point accelerating fast. We wait for that vehicle to do their thing, and as you can see, they then indicated. So we can see, even with a professional driver like a black taxi, it's never a guarantee. So be 100%, just take your time, roll into position, and once you're happy it's safe, then commit. So an uncontrolled crossroads is one that doesn't have traffic lights, but does have road markings. So you will have one major road, like in this picture here, the one that's running from the bottom of the page to the top, and two side streets, the ones that are running left and right. The reason why, same as a T-junction, we know that they're side streets is because they've got give way lines or stop lines. So if you're approaching a crossroads and you're on the minor road, you've got to do your observations both right and left, but you also now have to pay attention to the people opposite you. Remember, you've both got give way or stop lines, so neither of you have priority over one another. So it's all about eye contact. Look at that person. Is that person just looking at you? Are they flashing their lights at you? Are they waving you on? If they're doing those things, it might be a sign that they're letting you go. Remember though, do your observations. Make sure it's actually safe. Just because they're telling you to go doesn't mean it's actually safe to go. You can always say thank you by putting your hand up after, but remember, don't flash your lights. It's not an official sign on the highway code and you will get penalized on your driving test. If that person, though, is just looking right and left and completely oblivious to you being there, let them go first. And that is always the better option anyway. It's what we call defensive driving. And we also will brush up on that when we talk about meeting. So remember, if you're on the minor road, look left, right, and let the people opposite you. Whereas if you're on the major road, Yes, you do have the priority over that part of the road, but be cautious. The reason why crossroads are the most dangerous types of junction is because people don't always see 
that they're coming out of a road. So you might have somebody just dart across the front of your car. So as you're approaching a crossroad, take particular attention to your rear view mirror. If someone is very close behind you, it could be worth slowing down just in case somebody does come out of those junctions so you're lessening the chance of an impact. If there isn't anyone behind you or they're far enough behind, then you can proceed, but just be cautious, be looking right and left, and I'll show you how they're done in these next videos. So we can see that we've got an oncoming vehicle here. Now, because we've both got giveaways, neither of us had priority. So it's about getting eye contact with that person, looking right and left repeatedly. We can see we've got this car, she's looking to the side. After that, I can then go. So here we can see we're coming up to a crossroad, so there's giveaway lines on the floor. I'm turning right, so I'm looking right and left repeatedly whilst also looking for the junction opposite. There is no one coming, so I can proceed. So we can see the sign here showing that there's a crossroad. I'm the thicker line, so I've got the priority. But I've got to be cautious of the people from my right and left. I've got the speed bump anyway, so I'm going to slow down for that. Looking right and left, there's no one there, so I'll just continue to drive. Remember, it's your priority. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can charge your way through. You have to be cautious. But if there is an accident, then it goes down as their fault and not yours. So we are now going to talk about controlled crossroads. There are four different types of controlled crossroads and it's dependent on the design of the traffic light. A traffic light, which is just a simple red, amber and green, is what we call a generic. With a generic crossroad, nine times out of ten, whatever your traffic light is on, the people opposite you will be on exactly the same. Remember though, nine times out of ten, sometimes the person opposite might be on red when you're on green. But the people to your left and right will always be on red when your light's on green. The only person that you have to be paying attention to is oncoming vehicles. In particular, if you're turning right, remember you have to give way to any oncoming vehicles. So on the approach to this junction, we can see it's a red light, so I've already started to slow down. There's no point getting there fast. I'm turning right. I'm in a right turn only lane, so I don't need to indicate. If I think that somebody could benefit from that signal though, you always can. So we're just gonna keep our distance here and we're just gonna wait for the traffic light to change to green. Now, remember, because you're turning right, you must give way to oncoming vehicles. So we're going to creep the car forward. There's no point using loads of power here, just nice and slowly into the middle of the junction. Now I'm past that stop line, if the traffic light does change, I don't need to worry about it. I can now go even if the traffic light goes to red because I'm beyond the point of stop. So the traffic light's gone to red, there is no more oncoming vehicles, so I can make my turn. Now I'm turning onto a dual carriageway, so I want to enter straight into the left lane. Remember, check the left mirror, make sure it's safe, maybe even check over your left shoulder before regaining that position. If there is someone in that left lane, stay in the right lane, once it's safe, then move across. The next type of crossroads that we have, which are controlled, is an independent. This is when you have a red, amber, and then a green arrow. When you have a green arrow, it's telling you that anyone that you would normally have to give way to, so for instance, if you're turning right, you would normally have to give way to those oncoming vehicles. But if you've got a green arrow, like in this picture here, it's telling you that the oncoming vehicle is on red. So it is safe for you to proceed. Obviously though, proceed with caution, make sure that there's no one jumping those red lights and always be careful of cyclists as well as emergency service vehicles. So we can see as we're coming into this crossroad, we have the arrow on the floor saying right turn only. We can see the traffic light, which is red, has the right turn only arrow on it as well. Now, because this is an independent traffic light, when it goes to green, and I have the green right arrow, we know that the oncoming cars will be on red. 
so we don't have to worry about them. We still have to be cautious. We've got to make sure that there is no one jumping the red light. We've got to be careful for cyclists. But also, we want to be looking over towards the right-hand side at the exit so we can see if there's anyone that's crossing, any cars coming out of any side streets over there, that could be of a potential issue. So as that traffic light changes to, uh, the people's traffic light to my left goes to red, we know that ours will probably go to green after. I've now cancelled my signal as well. There's no need to have it on as I'm in an independent lane. Uh, it's only one direction that we can go, so there's no point wasting your bulbs. So now the traffic light's gonna go to green. You can see the black car is slowing down. We're gonna keep an eye on it just in case. Looking over to the right, there is a pedestrian on my left, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on them. But otherwise, that's your right turn independent traffic light. The next one that we're going to talk about is a left turn filter. Left turn filters has four lights on the cluster usually, red, amber, green, and then a side box or one that's underneath which has a green arrow like in this picture here. Now, if the green arrow illuminates, anyone that's turning left can proceed but anyone going straight or turning right must wait for the generic traffic light to go to green before they can go. Nine times out of 10 again, when the green light does illuminate, the left turn filter light will distinguish. Now, what sometimes happens, and it's a common fault with learners, is they'll come up to that traffic light turning left, the green filter light for the left turn will turn off and then they'll stop. That will fail you on the driving test. What you need to remember is now it's a generic green light. So it means everyone can go, but anyone that's turning right must give way to oncoming vehicles, like in these videos here. So up ahead, we can see that the traffic light is red and we have the side box on the left-hand side, which is now illuminated with the green arrow. So anyone turning left like that van can go, but the black Porsche 4x4 has to wait until the main traffic light goes to green. And when the main traffic light goes to green, the green arrow will turn itself off. You can still turn left. It's a generic light, so it means everyone can go. So as you can see, that Range Rover is able to go. Just remember though, if you're turning right, you still have to give way to oncoming vehicles. And the last one of the controlled crossroads and the most dangerous one is the right turn filter. Now, with a right turn filter, you will have a red amber, then a green light, to which you would then go into the middle of the junction if you're turning right and wait for any oncoming vehicles. Remember, if there isn't any oncoming vehicles, you can just go straight into your turn. You don't need to wait for the green arrow to illuminate. If you're going left or straight though, you can proceed as you would do normally, it's a generic light. Now, what could happen is the green right filter arrow may illuminate, like in this video here. So again, at this crossroad, we're going to be turning right. So I'm checking my mirrors, I'm doing my signal and I'm keeping it over to the white line on the right hand side. Now I've got to give way to the oncoming car. So I'm just slowing down extra because I can see that there's a couple of cars. I now have my right filter light so I can then make my turn. It shows that the oncoming cars are now on red. So it is safe for me to proceed. So if you're coming from the opposite direction, if you imagine your traffic light's gone to green with the people opposite you and you've gone into the middle of the junction and you're waiting for those oncoming vehicles. Now what will happen is your traffic light won't illuminate with a green arrow. Instead, your traffic light will go directly to red. Now what you need to remember is because that fourth light hasn't illuminated for the right turns, the oncoming vehicles will now be on green with a green right arrow. So it's not the same as a generic traffic light where your traffic light goes to red and theirs goes to red and then you can go. In a right filter light scenario, you must remember that the oncoming cars will still be on green when you're on red. So how do we know when to go? Three things you can do. Either when you can see there's a big enough gap. Two, when there are no cars coming at all. Or thirdly, 
when you see the oncoming vehicles have stopped. If the oncoming cars have stopped, their traffic light must be on red. But you now need to get the car moving because the people from your left and right will now be on green. So you don't want to be stranded in the middle of the junction. So you want to get some power through. Always remember if you're going onto a dual carriageway, aim for the left lane unless you're going to be turning right or overtaking something in the left lane which is moving too slow. What we're now going to talk about is unmarked crossroads. Now unmarked crossroads are quite rare in cities but there are a few dotted around the place and I'm going to show you a video shortly of one. Now with an unmarked crossroads what you need to remember is effectively all roads are major roads so you can imagine how dangerous that would be. So the first thing you need to do is acknowledge that none of the side roads or your road has any road markings. And that's a lot easier said than done because if there's nothing to see, there's nothing to see. So be very cautious whenever you're driving in sort of quiet back street areas. And if you can see that there is a junction with no road markings, slow it down and treat it like a give way line. So go down into first gear if needs be if you're in a manual car obviously just braking if you're in an automatic look absolutely everywhere and then commit if there is an accident at an unmarked crossroads the insurance will deem it as knock for knock which basically means your insurance will pay for their repairs and their insurance will pay for your repairs so you're both seen as at fault and you'll both lose your no claims discount as well so just slow it down take your time make sure it's definitely safe before you commit so now i'll show you a video of the unmarked crossroads so this is the unmarked crossroads and you're going to see where the problem is here it looks like you're going straight but you need to treat it as a give way is there anything coming from my right or my left? If there's not, then we can proceed. Remember, if you do get involved in an accident there, you will have the insurance deem it as knock for knock, which means that your insurance will pay for their repairs and their insurance will pay for your repairs. So you're both seen as at fault and you'll both lose your no claims. So now we're going to talk about staggered crossroads and when or when we shouldn't signal. Now, if you're coming up to a crossroads and you're going straight into the road that's offset slightly to the left or slightly to the right, if the road you're going straight into is visible on the approach, then I wouldn't signal on the approach. Whereas if the road that you're going straight into is not visible on the approach, I would use a signal for the initial turn and then another signal for the opposite turn. So in the second video I'm going to show you now, we're going to be turning left and then going right to go into the road that's opposite. The gap between the two roads is about 10 to 15 metres. So I'll show you first of all a staggered crossroads where you don't need to indicate and the second one will be one where you do need to signal. So with this crossroads, I'm going straight. It is slightly staggered, but it's not a big stagger. We can see the road that we're turning into, so I wouldn't bother with an indicator here. So all I'm gonna do is just a slight bit of left turn and then just aim straight into my exit. We can see that the road we're turning into was also a one-way street, so we don't need to enter on the left-hand side. So we can just get positioned straight away, so it avoids the van. So here we have a staggered crossroads, but the stagger is so big, I would use an indicator here to go straight. So I'm going to do my mirrors on my left signal. I treat it the same as any other T-junction giveaway. Whilst looking at the road that I'm turning into as well, just to make sure there's no one coming out of there that I need to be aware of, before then using the right signal to make this turn. And again, treat it the same as any other right turn so give way to any oncoming vehicles good look into the road make sure it's safe before you then commit into the center position now sometimes if you're turning left off of a dual carriageway at a crossroads or even sometimes on side streets you might have what's called a slip lane which is an independent little lane for anyone that's turning left you want to enter into that as soon as possible because then you get out of the way of the dual carriageway so the people on the dual carriageway can continue to carry on their speed without having to slow down like in this video here 
So here I'm turning left and we've got a slip lane. It's designed so we get out the dual carriageway quicker to allow people behind us to carry on going straight. But what you've got to be careful is sometimes you'll have a pedestrian crossing like we have here, and then you have a giveaway line. So you need to look to the right, see if there's anyone coming, cyclists for instance, that may be a bit slower, before you can then commit. Acknowledge the road markings because they give you all the information. If you were to carry on going there, that could be quite a big accident. So make sure you're aware of it. So I hope that video has helped. And if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can.